Hey Google, pause music. Good morning, good morning. This is Jacqueline Richardson, Jackie, Deja. It's JJ Diamond, whatever y'all call me. Today is Friday. We got to thank God for waking us up. Thank God it's Friday for some people. Let's check the weather here in Charlotte. Alexa, what's the weather today? In Charlotte, it's 57 degrees Fahrenheit with cloudy skies. Today, we can look for intermittent clouds with a high of 74 degrees and a low of 46 degrees. Oh, let me tell y'all what happened to me today. I was listening to some music on um, Google. And um, I had mentioned Alexa because I'm so used to calling Alexa. And she got sarcastic with me. I wish y'all could have heard it. I wish I would have waited for the tape, but I didn't know she was going to do it. You know, they do these things. <laughs> you know, and you just don't know it, you know. Uh, but I said, Alexa... Such and such and such. I can't remember what I said. And she said, One second. No, no. Alexa, no. Alexa. Dismiss alarm. Alexa. Dismiss alarm. And then Google said, I'm flattered, but that's not my name. She got sarcastic with me. I tell you, these computers are going to drive me crazy. But anyway... I hope everyone is doing well this morning. Today, I want to talk about uh, self-esteem within women and men. Okay. Um, we all have emotions. And we go through, sometimes, a self-esteem issue. It can be... Um, you notice people's self-esteem issues by the way they react. You have some people that lash out about it. You have some people that stay quiet about it. Um, some people, what they call going into a box, they own shell. You know, um, these are the type of, of people that's out here. You know, someone has some type of issue, but some people can hold their self-esteem issues very well. And then you have those that, that can't. And this is kind of how to recognize a self-esteem issue. Now, like with myself, I'm going to use myself for instance. You know, um, I don't like when I'm overweight. Okay. Um, I feel very insecure about myself, my body. I don't like my flab hanging over, even though the world told me it was okay. You know, um, I just don't like it on me. And when I say the world told me it was okay, it's because... As y'all see, BBWs get a lot of respect in this in this game. You know, um, they put that work in and they make themselves look good. And I, I appreciate them 100% because um, they made me feel comfortable in some of my fat. <laughs> okay. Uh, however, it's just not for me. You know what I mean? But... It doesn't break me down to where um, when somebody says it to me, it bothers me. So do you, do you get it? Where some people, it will bother them. You know, it will affect them emotionally. And these are the things that we have to watch out for when we're out here and we're saying negative things to people because we don't know how they're going to react or what it's going to do to them um, long term. This is why we have to try to learn to be kind to one another. And even if they are, say, obese or um, a little fat, that they still look good. Even though we know being obese can actually harm your health. But we don't want to um, put people down. We don't want to do that. You know, we want to lift people up. You know, that's the way it works. You know, um, if you see, like I had, I was on TikTok and I seen a lady, she was overweight, she was obese, and she made the decision she wanted to lose the weight. And what we did was we all commented good things, you know, we're happy that she made this decision, not because of the way she looks, because of her health, 
you know, and she knew it. She knew it and she accepted all of our, our great comments and we gave her strength to keep going, you know. So you don't know what a person is lacking inside and it's always best to give, try to give them strength versus negativity because it would help them if they are having a self-esteem issue. Okay, now I want to talk about my song um, with me and 50 Cent, I'm the Man. When I wrote my part to that song, I had to backlash off of what he was coming with, things he was saying. So, you know, when he he did his part, uh, and this is like, you know, when you, I, I be listening to a lot of these songs, and this is why, you know, me and 50 Cent song went gold without even being played on the radio. Because when you're writing songs, people, you have to listen to what the other person is writing so y'all can be on the same wavelength. You know what I mean? Be on the same page. You know, now, in the beginning of the song, when 50 sings, he's talking about uh, a person selling drugs, coming up. Now he out here partying, getting all the girls. You know, it was like he was building from the ground up in the song. Okay? If you listen to it. And and you know what? And, and I, I also wanted to say this. Uh, 50 next month. December 15th will make five years that this song has been out and we are still making money from this song. So I do believe this song will be around for a very long time and it is going to be a classic. So I'm, I, I'm thankful. I love you 50 for this one. Um, December 15th of this, this year will make five years. Yes. So I just wanted to throw that out there. Um, when he wrote his part, he was building from the ground. Okay. He he talks about how the minister was trying to talk to him and, you know, he wasn't trying to hear what he was saying because he was struggling and the minister's rich. So, you know, he ain't trying to hear what he's saying. I'm trying to get rich like you just in another way. So, you know, now he goes and puts the drugs in the pot and start making the drugs and getting this money. And now he on and now he going to keep on making this money. He out here with the females and he's doing this. But then now you know, he, he has these women. Okay. So this is where I come in at. Okay. Because on the song, I was one of those women. Okay. And portrayingly the wife. Okay. Looking for at the wife's perspective. Okay. Because I was there when he was building himself level by level. Okay. And now you out here with all these women. Okay. Stuff like that. And I I just want to throw this out here. Um, Stuff like that will break down a family and break down a woman's self-esteem and vice versa, you know, because I was like me personally, I was working a job and I was working so much. I had a mate and I really didn't pay no attention to that mate. And I'm going to be honest with you because the mate, it's not that I didn't love the mate, it's that I was doing so much financially that, you know, you can't, and, and this is what I, I tell people too, when you take on so many things, something is going to be neglected, okay? And most of the time in, in, the, in the game or just in everyday life, when men go out there to try to make sure that they wives and their kids and, and, you know, they have everything that's needed. So when they stand at that door and say, daddy's home and they have all the money to pay the bills, Nobody needs to worry about anything. We see that part of it. Okay. Oh, they lucky. They got this. They got that. But what is being neglected? Somebody's relationship is being neglected. It could be the kids. It could be the wife. It could be the home. And it could take down the family's self-esteem. Okay. As a whole. Okay. So these are the things that we have to look at when, we, when we're building families, when we're building our lives and we're meeting people. And instead of breaking their self-esteem, building their self-esteem. You know, I had to learn that I was breaking my family. Okay. And I had to go to counseling and talk about it. Therapy. You know, I went to therapy to talk about it. And when I went to therapy, I didn't see some things, you know, when you go to therapy... And I want to I throw this out there, people. When you go to therapy, don't always think that the therapist is going to be on your side. Okay? Because that's not their job. 
<laughs> their job is to listen to you and tell you what they see based on what you told them. Okay? So, don't think that, you know, you, you can't be wrong. Because you can. It could be something that you're doing, even though you're overwhelmed and stressed. It could be something that you're doing that you didn't even recognize because you're doing so much. That's affecting your household. Okay? And your the people around you well-being or self-esteem. Okay? My therapist had told me, you know, you need to learn to take time out for your family. You're doing too much. Granted, yeah, you're making good money. You you know, you're able to buy them whatever they want, but they need your love. And I was like, ooh. You know? And this is coming from a stranger. You know? And you're saying to yourself, okay. Was I really being like that? So now it's time for me to evaluate some things. You have to make time for your people. Because you're going to break them down. Okay. And then that's when the bickering, the arguing comes in. Now y'all calling each other B-I-T-C-H's. And, you know, you're getting mad with your mate and you're coming out of character and now it makes you look bad because you came out of character. Because you're not doing your part. Okay? So, like, even in the song, you hear um, 50, a lot of people get mad with, with 50 because he curses a lot. You know, a lot of us have that that problem. You know, I'm one of them, too. My family curses like sailors. So, you know, I grew up knowing about curses. So, my kids, they they do the same. You know, and it's not right. But we have to learn how to discipline ourselves, you know. And I'm learning. I'm learning how to, to keep the curses out. Sometimes I just have to express myself with it. Um, but sometimes we have to, you know, put a halt on it and say, no, we're not going to say this. Going back. If you listen to the song, 50 says, I come in. The lights of the TV is on. So in other words, he comes in for a moment. You know, give his wife some love and then bounce because he got to do what he got to do. Okay. That would break a woman's self-esteem and the same as a man. Okay. Because now you're coming and going. You didn't get to give, you know, you, you came in to say, have intimacy Physically, physical intimacy, because you can have intimacy as well. You come in to have physical intimacy, and now you're gone. Okay? That's just so your mate won't go out and, and seek it elsewhere. But then where is the mental intimacy? Okay? Because in a relationship, you need both. So now the self-esteem of the woman is getting broken down. Because she's missing something. So now this is why she's seeking it elsewhere. So now when, when you got, say, music artists or actors that's always on the road. You got big corporate executives that's always on the road. Those be the guys that have these problems. Okay? Where guys and women that have these problems with their mates having low self-esteem. Because they're always going. They don't know what's going on. You know, their minds are always playing tricks on them. Sometimes they, they could be right that they made us out there doing something crazy. And then on the other uh, flip side, they may not be doing anything. It's just that their minds has taken them. And, and you may have met this person. And I just want to throw this out here. And I saw this post this morning where this girl was on a plane just acting crazy. Okay. And you might have met this person and they was good. But then as time go on and y'all build your life together and y'all try to separate because, y'all, you know, you got to pay the bills. So you can't be together all day. You know, the beginning of the relationship, y'all say you're both not working. Y'all meet, you know, one looking for a job, one going to school, whatever the case may be. And y'all having this lovely time. You're on cloud nine. Okay. But then y'all realize bills got to get paid. So now you, I got to get a job. I got I to gotta do this. We can't lay up in the bed all day, every day, you know. Now you separate. So now the minds are playing tricks on you. What is this person doing? Why, what are they doing out there? You know, why are they staying work after work for two hours after they say they get off? You know, 
And we say to ourselves, like, uh, you know, why are you thinking like this? I'm not doing anything. This is what you, you're saying as a mate, you know, male or female. I'm not doing anything. I'm I'm working, okay? But they don't see it because they were so used to you being there with them and being around them, and now you're not. So their self-esteem, you know, they, they, they go outside and they may see people looking nice or um, looking on social media and see people looking nice and feeling good, and they're all alone. So they're feeling like they're sheltered. They're waiting for you to come in. They don't know what you've done in a 12-hour time frame. And now they're starting to feel some kind of way. And this is why I feel that when, when you get with somebody, it's best to get with a mate that you're compatible with. And when I say compatib- compatible, meaning that they want the same, same wavelength as you. So if you're a corporate exec, they should be a corporate exec. That way y'all won't miss each other that much. Okay, you will understand if you didn't get a call because they was working late, you know, into their work, you know, and you know how to fall back and say, I ain't doing nothing but working, you know, because I know what I do. You know what I mean? So that's where the compatibility thing comes in at. You know, people don't understand that it plays a big part in finding someone. And it's not that they're your soulmate. It's just finding someone that understands your level of life okay now i have uh, and i'm gonna be honest with you i have friends that i may not talk to for months but then all of a sudden something will uh, uh, pop in my head and make me call them like i needed to call you now this 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 particular friend you know they'd be feeling some kind of way and instead of them saying to me hey jackie I, i'm tired of you calling me Every two months to check me out, you want to call and leave a message. I want to talk to you on a regular basis, okay? Or if I call them and then I talk to them on Friday, call on Saturday and don't get them, call on Sunday, don't get them, and then now I'm flipping like where you was, what were you doing? You We talked every day this week and then all of a sudden the weekend came. This is where communication comes in at. Okay, if you say, hey, on the weekends, I just try to keep my phone off and and collect my thoughts without dealing with anybody. That's my time for myself. You have to communicate because this is what this type of stuff will break down people's self-esteem. Okay, and sometimes in some relationships, you're bouncing it back off of each other. Okay, that's how I'm the man was written. Okay, where we were bouncing back off of each other's negativity. And this is why the song, like I said, I said again, this is why the song went gold because when you have, and this is what most people do, when you have two people in a relationship and they see eye to eye, but then they don't, you know, and they, a lot of people call it that hood love and all. Not, and it, it goes on in, in the... <laughs> In the suburbs and in the rich areas as well. Okay? It's two sides to every story and how a person feels, you know. Even with me, I'm, I've met people with my new job. I met people that are rich, rich. Okay? And <laughs> they be going through some things. And you can tell they're going through some things. And they'll snatch open the door. And, you know, they want to give you... uh an excuse of why they ordered wine and you're like, I really don't care. I just want to get my money. (laughs) You know what I mean? But you know, they don't want to look a certain kind of way. So it's like, okay, I'm ordering wine. I want this person to look at me a a funny way. You know, that person's self-esteem has been broken down some way, somehow. Is it the job? Is it the husband? Is it the kids? Who's breaking down this child's self-esteem? Okay. I mean, this child, this uh, person's self-esteem. You get this this long story that, like you, like I said, you don't even care for real. You know, it's not bothering you, but it's bothering them, and they need to express it. You know, so when I be out here, y'all, <laughs> with Instacart, shout out to Instacart, love you guys. Um, I run into some things. You know, sometimes you may just run into a person; they just want their packages, and then you run into somebody; they just wanted to see someone. 
you know, and they want to chat for a few minutes. And I'll do it on on a you know on on the sake of you don't know how that person is thinking, you know, you don't know what they're feeling inside. Their self-esteem could be low. Mm. They could be thinking about suicide. They could be stressing over their kids, over their husband. Their husband go, you know, especially these rich, rich people. Their husbands go away for months and months sometimes. And they're stuck in the house with the kids by themselves for days upon days. Yeah, the bills are paid, but they're lonely. You get tired. You're only around kids. You're talking to kids all day. You know, you want some adult. You want an adult lifestyle. You know, and it breaks down their self-esteem. So now they're starting to feel ugly. They're looking in the mirror and they're saying, okay, I don't see myself. Who am I? This is not who I used to be. I used to go out. I used to do this. I used to do that. People, and I, I want to say this, don't break yourself because of what's going on in your life. Don't do it. And when I say break yourself, meaning lose you. Self-worth, self-love is very important, okay? Even though I feel like I'm fat, I'm still going to look in the mirror and say, I look pretty. I'm smart. I got a job. I got money. I'm good. I'm going outside. You have to ask God to take that negative feeling away. Because it's going to break you day after day after day. You get to the point where you don't see yourself winning at all. Okay? And it can be mentally challenging. Not only for you, but for your mates. Because when they step into this circle of you having your mental uh, Mm -hmm. breakdown or your self-esteem issues of of being... um, say, quarantine or, um, what, what, what is the other word I'm looking for besides quarantine? But being in this house, say, a house, while your husband is gone for months and months at a time, you know, you start feeling like you have no self-worth because you're not doing anything to help yourself. Someone else is doing it for you. But this is when a lot of women, they get into, say, crocheting or uh, this is a big thing back about four years ago. They was bringing this. I'm I'm, going to go back a little bit where a lot of the the basketball wives and a lot of the um, football wives were so tired of being at home alone. They wanted to start. They start their own businesses. Okay, And this was a big thing going on, I think, about four years ago. You know, it was everywhere like. How they were standing their ground like, hey, we tired of being at home taking care of the kids all the time. We want to do something too, you know. And some of the husbands was actually investing in them so they can, you know, deal with their emotions. Because it might have been for a little while, but because I seen one husband say to his wife, are you going to keep this business going? I don't want to invest in this. And then you turn around and just throw it away because you stressed out or whatever the case may be. You know, his theory was, I'm on a budget. I got to keep some of this money for later on. And you want me to keep dishing out money for businesses that you really don't even want. So what is it going to be? You know, but they get bored and they need something to make them feel whole. Okay. You notice I said, I say in the song, let me in 50 cent, you sent for me. At a certain level, he got to the point where, okay, I'm all the way over here. Let me send for my wife. She's going to come up here acting a fool, so I got to tell these women to slow it down because she's going to try to kill him. You know? He got to the point, okay, let me send for her. I got to give her this love. Because if I don't, I'm going to lose her. Okay? Why can I stand on ground with my chin up high and my crown on? Because I'm the wife. And all y'all other women got to go sit it down somewhere. Y'all temporary. I say that in a song. So my husband has given me fame even though he's away. Because he let them know, 
I have a wife. Now, going back into self-esteem, these women that are dealing with your mates or men that's dealing with your mates have no reason whatsoever to interact, whether they're dealing with them corporately, they shouldn't be dealing with them sexually, However, it happens when they're out there sometimes because some women will push themselves on your men and some men will push themselves on, on women. When they're out there and their husbands are le- letting them know, your husband is letting them know or wives letting them know that they have husbands or whatever the case may be. And these people want to go up above and beyond to try to break the marriage. Okay. Now I'm seeing several, several mm. fatal attraction cases. Okay. Um, and I've seen several movies. Y'all seen the one um Fatal Attraction. Then there's Beyonce was in one. Oh, what was the name of that one? With Itris Elba. Um I forgot the name of this one. And he didn't do anything. This woman just kept pushing herself on her. You know, but Beyonce didn't lose her self-esteem based on what was going down. She got strong like black women do, (laughs) and said, I'm going to get this woman out of our lives, okay, because she keep coming for my man, and I'm not with this, you know, I forget the name of the movie, oh man, I wish they put it on, um, on Netflix or one of these other two B's or something, because it's a good story, The, the, the story plot, because she never got out of character, I mean, I'm talking about Beyonce's part, she never got out of character, You know, where she was breaking herself down on his level, you know, with him. She never said, well, what did you do to make this woman do this? You know, she never said any of that in the film. It was, honey, okay, I believe you. You saying that you never did nothing with this woman and this woman is doing what? Okay. And and then she was showing up at their houses, at their house and and, and, um, trying to hurt the kid. And it was just, you don't know who these people are and where their mindsets are. So now you, you cheating with your wife and, and I'm just throwing this out here. You, I mean, you're cheating on your wife or your husband and this particular person can have a mental issue. So you're breaking down your family and then now you're bringing in extra. Okay. I've seen another movie where it was a woman who, who played that I be seeing so many movies, y'all. But I can't remember the name of this movie. But what happened was this woman was a lawyer. And her husband, they wanted to move out of the city into the, like, not country, but they they lived on the beach. They both was making good money. The kids were grown, going back to to college. And now they're living their best lives. Because that's what marriage is for. When the kids grow up and move out, they have each other. Okay, that's the purpose of getting married and having a family. You build, you build, train these children, and then when they all gone, you live your best life with the mate that you fell in love with from the beginning to build this family. They moved out. She, they moved out on the beach. <laughs> Long story short. She ran into a college mate that was always in love with her. And this man followed her around and he put their life through pure H-E-L-L. You hear me? It was insane. And this was a man from college. Being that they lived out on the beach, it made it hard, made it easier for this man to do a lot of the things. He was a computer tech. So this man knew how to break into the the uh, her computer, put into the camera system. So he was able to watch. As a matter of fact, it was um who was the the crazy person? Um, Epps Omar Epps was the crazy person. I'm trying to think who the 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 uh the girl was. I can't remember. But Omar Epps was the crazy person. So y'all Google movies with Omar Epps, and y'all might find it because I forgot the name. 
but it's a, a definitely a product of what can happen if you go out and you're not honest. Because that's what that's what messed her up. She wasn't honest with her husband because her husband could have stopped things, and he was a, a former FBI, so he could have stopped things before things got started. Okay. In other words, let his people know from the FBI so they could be watching this dude. But it just didn't work out that way in the movie. However, her husband was starting to feel, you know, you could see that he was starting to lose his self-esteem a little bit. Because, and that he was in, and this is the thing too, he had a, a accident where he wasn't able to give her the love that, you know, she required physical intimacy. So that was breaking her down mentally, which led her to going out, which led her to going out with this particular guy to lead this guy on, even though she was just going out to hang out and then she kissed him. Okay. And that's what made this man weak. And he started dating her friend. I'm telling y'all, it's a must see. I don't know if I shared it, but y'all got to see it. But the husband is sitting in the corner being broken down while she's living her best life out here with these people. And in the, the end result, he had to save her because of what she's she done to the family. So this is why we have to beware of certain people, you know. And when you have a family, you're supposed to um, separate from, I'm not saying box yourself in from the world. But when you build your family, you're supposed to build your family based on your love and your trust, okay? And be able to understand what's going on um, when another person is going through something. Mm. Because when you don't communicate these different things, it breaks down your self-esteem. It breaks down your self-worth. And now you're starting to feel like, you know, you're not worthy of anything. Now you're thinking your mate is cheating. Now you think your mate is doing all of these crazy things. You don't want to go down that road. You know, you got people always looking in, always running their mouth, you know, but they don't know your emotions. You know, like me, I, I have hard emotions. You know, even though I'm a cancer, people say to me, you know, oh, yeah, cancers are very emotional. Yeah, we can be. But then we could also be very hard and cold where we won't show no emotions at all. We don't care what you're doing. Okay. Because we fell out of love or fell out of uh, just even wanting to be around you. Because that's one thing about cancers. If we don't get fulfillment, um, meaning security of love and trust with a person, it's easy for a, a, a cancer to distrust a person if you do something. We'll give you that, we'll give you that chance. But once you lose that chance, it's hard to get it back with us. Okay? So, some of us, like me, I don't have a problem with self-esteem when it comes to, you know, if a man decided he wanted to go be with another woman, that's on you. Okay? Because I know what I, I offer. I know I play my part. You know, I'm, I'm human. I can't do everything. You know? And that's the thing. Being in a relationship can be very overwhelming and it can... Take away your self-esteem. I see it happen every day, you know, especially with these young couples. And this is why I touch base on these things because I watch a lot of these young couples. They get together. They try to put their all into it, and they lose who they are. And it's sad, you know. And then we tell them, okay, stand up for yourself and tell um, your mate how you feel, you know. And sometimes they even go off, you know, or, or, or show out. But it's a certain place, certain time for everything. You can't be in the street going off, flipping out, because people literally think you have a mental illness. But they don't know that this person has broken you down to where this is what you're showing now. This is where you're at in life. That he's created this mental illness. Okay? And it can happen, people. Mental illnesses, people are not always born with a mental illness. Mental illness can be created with someone because of their lifestyle and the way they, the people that they live around. 
And if you're in that type of situation, get help as soon as you can so you can get out. Because it's a bad situation and will continue to go on. Now, getting back to me and um, 50 Song. Now, you know, a lot of people in, in actuality thought that me and 50 was really married. You had some of those, and then you had some of those like, no, they're not married. They just did a song, you know. Granted, some was right, some was wrong. Now, when 50 got into his relationship, you know, normally I would spread 50's name all over the place. Happy birthday, 50, 50, happy birthday, 50, 50, 50, 50. You know, I didn't do that this year. Reason being is because if that's a serious relationship, even though we have a song together, it could play tricks on her mind. Okay? And I didn't want to be the barrier of breaking her down while she's trying to build with her husband, her mate. Okay? And this is why I step back. People might not understand, you know, 50 might have even said to himself, like, she normally say happy birthday. She normally sends out um, I I was sent out a um, a email blast actually every year for Fifty's birthday that I've been in, back in this game and been connected with Fifty. I was sending email blasts out to everybody. I would actually connect us because of the song, um, because we're both cancers. So I was sent out an email blast to let everybody know, you know, hey, it's Fifty's birthday, y'all. You know, but I didn't do that this year. But as a friend of Fifty's, I could have been putting down his self-esteem. Like, what did I do to lose my um, respect and love from this person? What you've done was you got into a relationship. And the type of person that I am, I'm not going to interact or be a part of anything that you seem to be building. Okay? I just want him to understand that and the people to understand it as well. Okay? It's not that I hate him. It's not that um, I don't want to uh, be a part of him. Because, like I said, we have a song that's going to be a classic 20 years from now. That people can recognize because they go through it on an everyday basis. So it's not that I hate him. It's not that he was building a life. And I did not want to be... Because, like I said, some people have mental issues. So... You don't know if this person has a mental issue or not. So the best thing is to sit back and watch. You know, um, I did make a, a statement of let's see what type of person she is. But she would never come out really and start talking and, you know, um, putting her her life on, 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 on um, social media so we can get to know who she is um, and how she thinks. So whatever the case may be. So I didn't want to be a part of that based on the song, you know, and all the other songs mm-hmm. that we have um, together. Because you don't know how people think, especially these young people, because they wasn't, I'm not saying that y'all younger people and younger generation wasn't raised right. Y'all wasn't given um, strong, sturdy, uh, how can I put it? Some people wasn't given that extra love. You, you understand what I'm saying? Like, granted, I tell people every day, I come from the hood. You know, I, even though I lived in a house, I still come from the hood. And when I was feeling some kind of way inside my house, I come outside and the hood would make me feel loved again. Okay? So, I, I had them to help me keep my self-esteem. You understand what I'm saying? So that's one thing about the hood that's actually a, a wonderful thing because we we try to love one another to keep each other built. You know what I mean? In, in the hood and in, in the ghetto. When you live in the suburbs, it can be the same, but to an extent because everybody got their own lives going, in, going on. So they can focus on your life as well. You know, in the hood, people are nosy, not only nosy, some you got some that's nosy, some that really want to help, some that's going to give you that good word before you take off and do with your day or whatever the case may be. And it helps us build, some of us. You know, matter of fact, I'm going to shout out my friend Shauna. You know, she just tagged me in a post about me, me. It was me and a couple of other girls that when she was going through what she was going through, she needed us. You know, the the support, you know, of when she was going through stuff to listen or 
try to give some good advice or just keep pushing up because sometimes that's what you need when you lose your self esteem and lose your your uh well being. You need that extra push. Sometimes if you got to even give them um, tough love, you know, you have this love for this person and you say, you know, I love you, but you, you too much is going on and you got to get it together. You know, sometimes relationships can do this to you, male or female. So this is why you have to be aware of certain people and, and red flags. I talked about red flags before, you know, um, Shout out to Buffalo again. You know, they, they taught me at Catholic Charities, they taught me about them red flags. And sometimes you see red flags and you say to yourself, do I really want to deal with this person? Is this a red flag that I could deal with or I don't? Because being in a relationship is a lot of work. And if you can't put that work in, don't even go for it, people. Just date. You don't need any extra in your life, especially when you're battling building your soul or... Or building yourself and your self-esteem. You don't need all of that extra. You just need to be alone. Me, personally, even if I'm in a relationship, I know how to go be alone. I separate myself away from people. When I start feeling like I need to rebuild, because it happens to everybody. Where sometimes you're feeling less worthy than um, you felt yesterday. And people will do this to you. You know, and that's what makes it so bad. You know, is, is people do these type of things to you. But then they don't realize that there's some people that's stronger than they thought, you know, and they can overcome it or beat it, you know. And then, too, that, that when they're doing this stuff, that negative outcome actually comes back on them. So when they're negative to, to, to you, they bouncing that negativity right back to them, especially when you're strong and you ask God to, to put a, a, a shield up to, to... I saw a TikTok. Let me slow down a little bit because I want you to understand I saw a TikTok where the lady was saying that you might have shot the gun, but God disabled disabled it because he put that bar- barrier up. So when people was out there throwing pretty much shade or hate or whatever, anything to, to make your self-esteem lower than what it is, you ask God to put that barrier up, and all it's going to do is bounce right back to them. And then they're going to have them same days, them days that they were throwing at you, that negativity. Mm. And then they're going to say, well, why am I feeling like this? Why are you feeling like this? Is because this is what you was doing to others. And some, some people have shields up to, to push that negativity back to you. So now you're feeling less worthy because this is what you wanted to push out there. So you got to watch out for things like that as well. And stay prayed up, people. You know, you can't let nobody break you. And they might try. But that's where God comes in at. That's when you call on God and you ask him to, to put that barrier up, to protect you, cover you in the blood of Jesus. Because we have to stay in our right mind right now, especially in these times. If you're, if you're having a mental illness issue, go and seek help. ASAP, because during these times that we're going through, you need to be in your right mind because people are going to snap. And that's the worst thing that we need at this moment. We need everybody to, to stay in their right mind and stay focused. And this is why we get on here every day. Well, I get on here every day and all the other people that do podcasts get on and we're talking every single day. It's not because we, we <laughs> really want to get up and, and, and dedicate ourselves to giving y'all information. But we do it because we want the people to survive. You're not going to be able to survive in the upcoming days if you don't get your mind right. Your mind is the key. The way you think. Your choices. Your decision making. How you handle things. Y'all all all have a good weekend. This is Jacqueline Richardson. Miss JJ Diamond. Jackie Deja. Whatever y'all call me. I love y'all. Talk to y'all Monday.